Welcome to this web lecture on designing transport networks. So let's first look into what a transport network is. So as we saw on the previous slide, for instance, a transport network could be a combination of multiple different bike sharing stations. It could, for instance, also be the road network within Europe. Uh, but then, of course, if we have a road network, it might also be relevant to decide where we're going to put our gas stations, where we're going to put our fire stations. But for instance, for, for a company, it might be a lot more relevant where I'm going to put my, um, my warehouse or where I'm putting a supermarket or where I'm going to put um, a production facility. So there's a lot of different kinds of transport networks, but all of them have rather similar decisions. So network design um, in the spaces is just setting up a network, which clearly includes determining which facilities and which arcs to use in a network. So a facility is then a node and an arc is a direct connection between any two nodes. If we do network design, then we always have to make these decisions years in advance, which are of course subject to uncertainty. I don't know how my demand is going to be in five years from now when I finally can open this new highway. And network might also change due to uh, demand structures, due to production processes changing or any other reason. So for instance, if I'm uh, opening a new highway now and in five years, a lot of people move to one side of the highway, then I might have to in increase the capacity of my highway. So now let's look at distribution networks, which is one example of a transport network that we can design. So in here we have four different facilities. So we have some store, we have a factory and we have two consumers. And in a first case, we can just connect all of them directly. So we can directly ship from the factory to the consumer on the left and from the factory to the consumer of the on the right. Problem is this might, might just be very, very inefficient if we only always deliver one parcel and not uh, 100 parcels or 1000 parcels. What we can do to circumvent that is we can um, just have one cycle in which we connect all of them. This, of course, can mean that it takes a little bit longer for certain items to be delivered. What we can also do to reduce, for the same purpose, to reduce the, uh, to reduce the costs is to place a single warehouse in the middle. So then we ship from the store to the warehouse and then to the consumers instead of directly from the store to all consumers. All of these, of course, come at advantages and disadvantages. So which of these three is the cheapest or the best according to any metric? It depends, of course, on the demand. It depends on the cost structure that we're having and also depends on additional constraints. So if I want to deliver really, really fast, let's just say we're talking about um, life-saving medication and we first have to send that to a warehouse and then to the consumer, then the consumer might just be dead by the time it arrives there, which is clearly not what we want. So then uh, a direct delivery is clearly beneficial because it's the fastest option that we're having. Uh, the same would, could hold if our capacity at our central um, warehouse in the hub and spoke setup is too little because in this case we simply cannot uh, satisfy all demand. So, but just from looking at it, we cannot say which one is the best in our circumstances. So what we're going to do is we're just going to look at a direct comparison for one particular case. So we have a demand, which is one for each origin destination pair. So for instance, we have one item that needs to be shipped from the store to the factory, one from, and one from the store to each of the two consumers. Uh, but also vice versa. And then we're going to look at how, uh, how expensive each of these uh, solutions are. So we have costs per item, per arc and per facili facility. So if we open the warehouse, we have to pay one unit. If we connect the warehouse with the store, we pay 0.7 because um, half of the square root of two is 0.7, give or take. But if we directly connect the two consumers, that costs us one. But if we diagonally con connect the warehouse with the consumer on uh, the, the supermarket with the consumer on the bottom right, then this costs us 1.4, so square root of two. So now 
let's look at this distribution network and see how much it's going to cost us to build this um, distribution network and to operate it. So the first thing we're going to look at is variable costs. So how much does it cost us to transport these items within this network? And this is just summing up the shortest path through this network for each origin destination pair and this is the cheapest for the direct delivery which is of course very unsurprising because this is uh, we're shipping everything on the fastest route that we can and we have all options available. The second cost block that we're considering is fixed costs. So we're looking at how much does it cost us to build these different arcs and this is the cheapest in the hub and spoke network because even though we have eight arcs, these eight arcs only cost us 0.7 uh, or half of the square root of two each. So this is rather cheap as well. And lastly, we have fixed costs for opening facilities. And this is clearly zero in the first two cases because we don't open any additional facilities, but it's one in the hub and spoke network where we open the warehouse. So now let's just sum up the total costs and we see that with this particular cost structure the hub and spoke network is the cheapest but you also see as soon as the warehouse house costs in the hub and spoke network increase by just one item all of a sudden we're actually um, we would be better with the single tour. So it's really it really depends on the exact cost structure which one is the cheapest. So now We've seen that the hub and spoke network performs best against the two networks that we looked at so far. But now the question is, how does it perform against the two facilities case or the pendulum case? So what I would like you to do is for the same demand and cost structure to determine how expensive the hub and spoke, the pendulum and the two facilities cases are. So now we saw that these different networks differ in their cost structure. They also differ in how reliable they are. So just assume that there's a snow uh, storm hitting and all of a su sudden trucks are delayed if not actually uh, involved in accidents. Or your employees go on a strike and all of a sudden you have to cancel all of your flights. So then the question is which of these two networks on the one hand side will break down faster or will be more reliable? So not break down as fast and which of these networks can be recovered faster after a failure. So what I'd like you to do is to read these two newspaper articles and tell me which network will break down faster and which network can be recovered faster. What I would like you to take away from this web lecture on designing transport networks is first of all what network design is about, secondly what kind of distribution networks uh, they are, what I would like you to do is to look into these other networks, so these um, pendulum cases for instance, and calculate the costs for those. I would like you to read the newspaper articles about reliability in transport networks. And what we're going to look into next is modeling facility location and modeling network design throughout several web lectures. Thanks.